The Leviathan Axe is one of my favourite mechanics in video games. The throwing and recalling ability is just so satisfying to do. With the recent release of Ragnarok, I decided to have a crack at recreating the simple version of this in Godot. As always, links to code and resources used are in the description below. Let's start by getting the basics of the axe implemented. First I downloaded an axe model from Sketchfab and imported it into Godot. I made a new scene for the axe with a character body 3D root node. I originally did this using a rigid body and that worked fine, but you get way less information on collision with them and that would prove painful when you're trying to implement other gameplay mechanics into your game. Create a collision shape for the handle by clicking on its mesh instance, then clicking on the mesh button in the editor and generating a collision sibling of your choice. Move the generated collision shape into the root and give it a good name. Now let's create an area 3D to handle the axe head collisions. The collision shape for this is just going to be a simple thin cube. Make it smaller than the mesh of the axe head to allow it to embed into objects a little before registering the collision. Finally, let's work on the script. After attaching a script to the root node, let's begin by defining an enum for the states our axe can be in. These states are held, thrown, landed and recalled. Let's also create a variable to hold the project set gravity value. Now create a function called throw and check if the state is set to held. Now we need to know the direction the axe must travel in once thrown. Let's do that by using a raycast from the center of the screen. Create a new function called get direction. Get the viewport and camera and then get the screen center from the viewport. Get the start and end position of the raycast and use them to create a query. Then call intersect ray with the query and check for a collision. If there's a hit, return the direction to the collision point. If not, return the direction to the raycast endpoint. Back in the throw function, call the getDirection method and save it into a variable. Use transform.lookingat to make our axe face the direction it's being thrown in. Now export a variable that will hold how fast the axe is launched and set the velocity to the calculated direction multiplied by this value. Finally, set the state to thrown. Override the physics process function. Check if the state is thrown and apply gravity to the velocity if the axe isn't grounded. Now call move and collide with the velocity multiplied by delta time to apply the velocity to the character body. Let's add some spin in too. Export a variable to hold the spin speed and also in physics process, if the state is thrown or recalled, rotate the axe around the x axis by the spin speed. To handle the axe landing, connect the axe head's area body shape entered signal to our axe script. Then, if we're not recalling our axe, zero out the velocity and set the state to landed. Now that we have an axe we can throw, let's set up a player scene. Create a new scene with another character body 3D as the root. Add a mesh instance capsule to represent our player model and a collision shape. Create a marker called center and well, put it in the center. Create a camera as a child of the center marker and place it somewhere that looks good. You could also use a spring arm to stop the camera clipping into level geometry. The spring arm uses ray casts to place its children at the end of the ray, wherever the collision happens, or at the set distance. Add another marker to represent our hand location and then add our axe scene as a child. Go to the project settings and set up the input map. We need WASD for movement. We also need some actions to throw and recall the axe. Here I'm using left click to throw and right click to recall. Attach a script to the player node. Add variables to hold our speed and acceleration as well as a reference to our axe. In Godot 4.0, we can now do this directly without having to faff about with node paths. Just assign it in the editor. Override physics process and apply gravity the same way we did in our axe. Then create a direction vector from the movement input actions we defined earlier. We want this direction relative to our player's transformation, which we can get by multiplying it by our transform basis. If the direction is set, lerp our velocity using our speed and acceleration values. If not, lerp velocity towards zero. Then call move and slide. This allows us to move. Now let's handle looking around. Create three variables at the top of the script. One to hold mouse position, the current pitch, and the mouse sensitivity. Let's also grab a reference to the center marker we set up earlier too. In ready, set mouse mode to capture, to hide and contain the mouse when the game is run. Override the input function and save mouse motion event data to our mouse position variable. 
Create a function called update mouse look. Apply the sensitivity to our mouse position. We'll use the X as your and Y as pitch. Clamp the pitch to make sure the player can't look too high up or down. Now apply your directly to the player node and apply pitch to the centre marker. This means the model won't get rotated when we look around. Call the update mouse look function in the process function. Now we can run and look. All that's left is to throw the axe if the throw action is pressed while the axe is in the held state. A few things to sort out before trying to throw our axe though. Firstly, the axe model I used initially imported looking to the right, so make sure your model points forwards and the collision shape still lines up. Let's also set the collision layers. Make the player layer 2 and mask 1 and set your axe and axe area 3D to layer 3 and mask 1. I also reduced the default throw force down to 20 so it doesn't get launched into the stratosphere on throw. Now we can run our scene and throw the axe. And while it works great while we're standing still, as soon as we turn or try to move, you'll see an issue. What's happening is the axe is a child of the player node, which means it will also move when the player moves. This is great when the axe is being held in the player's hand, but when it's thrown or embedded in the ground, we don't want that behavior. Luckily, new in Godot 4 is a handy property called top level. If you set this to true, when thrown, the node will no longer be influenced by the movement of its parents. Very handy. Well, now that we can throw the axe, let's add the ability to recall it. At the top of our axe script, get a reference to the player and our parent node, which should be the hand marker we made. Create a variable to hold our recall start position, recall speed, and recall progress. Create a function called recall. Return immediately if the state is already set to recalling. Then set our start position, zero out the recall progress value, and reset our velocity, and set the state to recalled. Back in the physics update, check if the state is set to recalled. If it is, update the recall progress. Then check if the axe is close enough to its parent to finish recalling. If it is, reset the position and rotation, turn top level off so the parent's translations begin to affect the axe again, and set the state back to held so that we can throw it again. If the axe isn't close enough, set the global position by calling the move towards function on the recall start position, passing in our progress as the delta. Go back to the player script and if the recall action is pressed, call the recall function on the axe. Don't forget to assign the player to the axe within the player scene. Now we can recall the axe, but it happens in a straight line, whereas in the game it swings out to the right first. I think the best way to implement this would be using a quadratic Bezier curve, but for simplicity here I'm going to use the built-in curve type. In the axe script, export a new variable called recall curve and set it however you want in the editor. The x-axis will represent the progress towards the player, and the y-axis will represent how far in the x-axis to offset the axe. Back in the code, we can get the x offset by sampling the curve. The curve is between 0 and 1, so divide our recall progress by its distance to the target position to make it a value between 0 and 1 too. Make this offset value relative to the player by multiplying it by the player's basis, and add it to the calculated new position. Now we have the Leviathan Axe implemented in Godot. I'm going to go over what I did with the character model at a high level as I think it deserves an in-depth video of its own. Let me know in the comment section if this is something you're interested in. I downloaded the Ybot character and some animations from Mixamo and combined them in Blender. I then created a recall and catch animations and imported them into Godot. I set up an animation tree with a state machine to handle animation transitions. In the throw animation, I call the throw function on the frame that axe needs to leave the player's hand and play the throw animation in the player script instead of calling throw on the axe directly. I then added a bone attachment node to the rig's hand bone and made the axe and its hand marker parent a child of it, so the axe will follow the player's hand when held. I also added a marker called IK target to the center node in the player and set up an IK modification which I covered in my procedural animation video to make the player bend up and down with the look position. And here we have the final results. Anyway, I think that'll do for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this useful. If you did, drop a like and maybe even subscribe for more game dev videos. If there's any other topics you'd like covered, drop a suggestion in the comments. Cheers!